Hello, I want to talk about Delaware and some of the issues that seem to have arisen because the USA and the individual state of Delaware have come top of the Tax Justice Network's Financial Secrecy Index. Now, I'm not going to apologise for one minute for this fact. It's perfectly clear from the methodology that we used that the USA and the state within it, which provides more secrecy than any other, had to come top of that index. If that's uncomfortable for some, so be it. We did a fair and honest piece of research, and that's the outcome. But there have been a lot of comments raised which suggest that some people haven't either read the methodology we've used or are willfully misreading it. First of all, let me be clear. The USA is a federal state, therefore some rules are set at federal level, that applies to all states therefore, and some are set at individual state level. Now, there was no way we could have done the work that we did covering 12 indicators at either state level or federal level. They simply, that was simply not possible because some of the issues were dealt with at each. We therefore had to consider federal law for a majority of the index data that we created, but we had to use state level for some of the information, for example, with regard to the incorporation of companies and the information put on public registers and information like that. That is a state level form of data. So, first of all, please read the data sheets that we have produced. A lot of the information we have supplied is about the US as a whole. So, for example, information on total deposits in banks is US-based data. Information on banking secrecy is federal-based data. Information, however, on individual company and corporations and how easy it is or not within a particular location is based on a particular state. And we had to use Delaware as an example. We could have used others, for example, Nevada and Wyoming, but we didn't. We chose Delaware because it is easily the most popular state for incorporation in the USA and the one which is most commonly highlighted with regard to the issue of financial secrecy. So it's a totally fair thing to do. I hope I've answered, therefore, the issue on banking secrecy. We do understand what is going on in Delaware. But there are some other points that have come up as well. One is that Delaware does have a register of corporations. We entirely accept and know that is true. It does have a register of corporations, but that register is almost utterly useless, as are the registers in, for example, Jersey, or indeed, to some degree, in the United Kingdom. Because, for example, you cannot be sure that the registered owner of a Delaware corporation is, in fact, the real owner of a Delaware corporation. If you can't work out who really owns a company, it is no use looking to that register to work out who you're really dealing with, who's backing this entity that you're trading with. And let's be clear when you're dealing with a lot of small entities who you know can be incorporated for a few dollars or a few pounds, what you're looking to be sure of when you check the identity is who is behind this corporation to check their integrity to see if you really want to deal with these people. This is looking through the veil of incorporation, I know, but it's what actually happens in the real world. That is why we want to hold people to account for the corporations that they own, and if that information is not on a register, we do not think that register performs a useful function. The other thing that we've been criticised for is for saying that there are no accounts on the Delaware corporations filed on their register. Well, there are no accounts filed on Delaware corporations filed on their register which is available for public inspection unless those companies are public companies. But we do not think that is sufficient information. Limited liability is a right granted by a state to a group of people, in some cases to an individual person, who own a corporation. The consequence of granting that right is that they are protected, protected from their own actions. They can, in quite a large range of circumstances, go bust and not be responsible to their creditors, who will, as a consequence, lose. Now, it's our view, and I think it's a totally reasonable view, that if you are granted such an extraordinary right, which lets you abuse the financial integrity of other people by using their capital for your purpose and potentially losing it when you don't pay them for the goods or services that they have supplied to you or the money that you have borrowed from them, then you have a duty to put on public record your financial information so that they can determine whether or not they wish to lend that money to you, whether as a trade supplier or as a lender or as an employee or anything else, or even as a tax authority.
Now, that's our reason for requiring this information on public record. It is absolutely essential to the smooth operation of markets, to the prevention of risk, to the prevention of fraud, to the prevention of abuse. We don't think that's much to ask for. We think it's absolutely imperative that that information is available to all and everyone who wants it at very low cost. We're not saying no cost. We've set a figure of $10 that could be charged for it. We think that's fair to have some handling fee. But the data should be available on public record. It should be verifiable. It should be published. And if it isn't, there will almost inevitably follow on the consequence of financial abuse, tax evasion and a loss to society at large. That's why we're asking for this change. We think it's appropriate. And for those who argue that only public companies need their accounts on public record, we say, no way, absolutely not true. Private does not mean, in the sense of a private company, that there is no risk of abuse. In fact, there's a massive risk of abuse and that abuse must be curtailed by accountability. It's the least we can ask for for the privilege of limited liability that these companies are given. Thanks for listening.